this out of squad of sure. Okay? I hope you agree with me. That the distance between x and y should be less than or equal to what do you call r squared. Okay? R, r, that distance, square root of x squared plus y squared should be less than or equal to r actually. Okay? And what is the probability that I'm going to hit outside the board? So imagine that this probability is zero. So imagine that I'm, when I'm throwing a dart, I'm always hitting on how do you call the board? Okay. What would be the condition for it? So you're going to say that, okay, you know, when this distance, for example, this is a point that is outside the circle and the distance between this and this is really x square plus y square is bigger than r actually. Okay. And let's imagine that this is not going to happen. That's an impossible limit actually. So I'm always hitting on what do you call the board. So this is the given schema. Now there are several things that, for example, we have to answer uh, in this situation. So the first thing that we would like to answer, say the following problems we need to answer. Say the first thing that we would like to answer is that find C. That what should be this C at? Okay. So we had a guess already for the C that one point out of the entire area is going to be 1 over the pi r square because pi r square can also be treated as the total number of points in the, the circle actually. So the one point out of the total number of points in the circle is going to be 1 over pi r square. But you know, as I said, I want to you know, compute it a bit differently. Find C. So this is what that I would like to do. Find the marginal density functions of x and y. Okay, so the so we need to find marginal density function of x and y. So this is the second task. The third task is third task is that if that if d is the distance between the point where it hit the dart and the region, okay, then I need to find, and the origin, then I need to find what is the probability that this distance is less than or equal to an arbitrary number A actually. Okay. So in other words, what is the probability that you're going to on this circle, you're gonna hit on a on a on a circle of the part. What do you call whose radius is a actually, where a can be this, it could be some other bigger number, it could be even smaller circle, so on and so forth. And obviously, this is not big. If it, you know, I can compute it directly. Okay, so it's gonna be you know the area of this region divided by the total area. So it's going to be pi a square divided by pi r square, but I want to determine it through uh, the two-dimensional joint PDF factor. So, so d is representing what? d is the distance between uh, the point where I'm hitting the dot randomly and the origin. And what is the probability that this distance is less than or equal to a? And I have been said to compute the expectation of this distance actually, which is not a difficult thing to do because um, if you if you if you if you know this, this means that you know the the probability density function of D and using that you can compute the expectation actually. So so these are some of the questions that we have to for example answer. So let's just start with the first part actually. So the A part. So how can I answer A part actually without getting into my direct guess? Okay. So the answer of doing it is that I know for you know this region. Okay. This region, let's call this region as the region, the entire disk as the region C. Okay. Or I know that the 
the, the integral of the joint PDF okay, from x to y dx dy over the entire you know R2 is equal to 1. Okay, this is equal to 1. Now how can I compute this integral? So I'm going to say that on this region, okay, f of x, y is c, and in other words, in this region, f of x, y is equal to c, and in the rest of the region, this is less than or equal to what you call, um, it's, it's zero actually. So I can say that this, I can write it explicitly equal to c, but this is going to be on the region where x square plus y square is less than or equal to x square plus x square plus y square less than or equal to what do you call uh, c actually. Uh, uh, x square plus y square less than or equal to r square and dx dy equal to 1. Okay. So now how can I compute this probability? I can, so C is a constant, I can pull it out. By the way, I can write this as that this is going to be C times dx dy equal to 1. While this region is what? This region represents the area of disk, area of this disk with the radius r actually, okay, area of the whole disk. Now what is the area of whole disk actually? So you can compute it that this is going to be equal to uh, uh, pi r square actually. So this is going to be equal to pi r square. So the area of this is going to be equal to pi r square equal to 1. So the c must be 1 over pi r square. Okay. Here you can ask the question, you know, why I am using, for example, uh, why I am saying that this guy is equal to pi r square directly. I mean, if you wish, you can compute it more explicitly. Okay. How? For this, you need to, um, so in other words, if you want to compute what you call the area of disk with radius r, r may be, you know, integral of dx dy over the region where x and y satisfy this, x square plus y square less than or equal to r square. Okay, you can uh, compute this and in order to compute this, what you can do, you can use, so, so, so there can be several ways, for example, one way could be that, okay, let's try to have an explicit limit on x and y. Okay, so if I have a disk, okay, if I have a disk, that goes from, uh, um, that starts from 0 and has a radius r everywhere, then uh, how can I, uh, how can I write it actually? So the x can be anything from here, from here to here, okay, here to here, and y can be anything between these two numbers actually. Okay, so if x is fixed, so in double integral you know that if the the limit on the first variable must be, you know, what do you call, uh, so it can be contain the variable. Okay, so if you are integrating, say for example with respect to x, you can have a limit in the terms of the y, but the, you know, the integral on y or the limits on y is going to be constant actually, so it's going to be an interval. Okay? 
So when x is variating here, y is variating between this and this. So this is really like the minus r to r actually. So, so y has a limit minus r to r. Okay, this is one way. And what is this point now? You can say that okay, if I have x square plus y square equal to r square, then x square is going to be, or maybe x is going to be the square root of plus minus r square minus x square actually. So it's going to be plus minus r square minus x square. This is also the limit actually. So here the distance is, um, what do you call, it? the distance between this and this is, the x is variating from uh, uh, minus r minus x square okay so all of this can be written as minus r minus x square and this half of the circle can be written as r square minus x square positive r, r square minus x square so it's going to be the limit from r square minus x square and r square minus y square actually, the scale root of, scale root of r square minus x square, so this is what it is going to be. And then you can compute the integral, but obviously computing this integral is a bit more, uh, what do you call, uh, fancy, okay, it's a uh, it's bit more difficult, you can, you can compute it, so you're going to have, not, not x square, sorry, y square, r square minus y square. So you're going, to, you're going to see that it's not easy to calculate this integral, but what you can do is that you can convert the integral. Uh, by the way, once again, if you, if you can't see this, this nap of the circle has an equation minus r square minus y square. So this is like x equal to minus r square minus y square, where this nap of the equation has x equal to uh, plus r square minus uh, plus y square actually okay plus r square minus plus uh, uh, square root of r square minus y square so the x is variating these two points of this no matter where you are so as I said you can try to directly compute this integral then you will see that you know you will have you know, a bit complicated integral, but you can easily compute this integral if you try to convert things in the terms of the polar coordinates actually. And, and if you remember that what is the polar coordinates, the, the polar coordinates goes like that, okay, my x is between r cos theta and y is r sin theta, okay. For theta, I know it's between 0 to 2 pi and the small r, since you are talking about the entire disk, so it could be 0 and the rest of the radius could be 0 and it can go at most to capital R actually. Okay, so if you have this, then you know um, what would be these limits actually? Okay, so the, the limits then are going to be, this is going to be like, okay, dr d theta, okay, maybe you need to put an r of the Jacobian, okay, and once you have this r of the Jacobian, your r goes from, uh, you can write d theta dr, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, d theta dr, or dr d theta doesn't matter, so the d theta is 0 to 2 pi, okay, and dr is r goes from 0 to what you call capital R and, um, and and that's it actually so if you if you compute for example this integral so what you're going to get so you're going to get you're going to get 0 to r and you're going to have r and uh, d theta will become theta and its integral from 0 to 2 pi will become what do you call 2 pi and dr and if you compute this integral what you're going to get um, you're going to get 2 pi and r square by 2 actually where 
the, uh, the integral is uh, from 0 to r. And if you substitute this, what you're going to get, so, so 2, 2 will get cancelled, and you're going to have pi r square actually. So pi r square is the other way that you can compute this integral. Okay? So, so, so again, we we found that this integral in, um, in in the expression is equal to what you call capital pi r squared. So this will become c times pi r squared. So the c is going to be one over pi r squared. Actually. Okay. These exercises are good. These calculations are good because they allow you to kindly, kindly, you know, quickly recall your um, calculus of stuff that you learned in your multivariate calculus. So, so that's a good opportunity to use those techniques actually solve the problems. So, what is the PDF then? So, the the, PD, the form of the PDF then becomes what you call. Um, okay, so now you can explicitly write that f of x y is equal to pi r square when x square plus y square is less than or equal to r square okay, and it's equal to 0 otherwise. This is what the PDF will be. Now I would like to find the marginal density functions of x and y. If you remember, if you want to compute the marginal density function of x or the density function of x actually, okay, then you need to take your PDF f of x y and integrate it from minus infinity to infinity with respect to y actually. Okay. So if you're going to do this, uh, what would be the result? Okay. So your y is variating from where to where. Okay. So you're going to say that okay on the region when x square plus y square less than or equal to r square f of x y is equal to 1 over pi r square and it's 0 otherwise actually. So you can pull this number out. So I'm writing it abstractly and then later I'm going to put the limit actually that in this region what is the limits on the y. Okay. So pi r square, so the pi r square is going to be outside and you're going to have the integral of dy and I want to put the limits on y. So again, I'm going to draw the circle okay, and I'm going to see y varies from where to where. So the y varies always from this lower map to the upper map actually. The question is what is the value of the y on the lower map of the circle or the lower part of the, the lower uh, half circle actually. Okay? So you're going to say that on this circle, I know that x square plus y square is r square. So I can compute the value of the y. So y is going to be r square. So y can be, what do you call, square root of uh, plus minus square root of r square minus x square. So it's going to be plus minus r square minus x square. Now in this region, y is negative. So this means that this curve has an equation y equal to minus the scale root of r square minus x square and in this region y is positive that means that this curve has equation y equal to scale root of r square minus x square and now y varies from here to here always in other words from this lower curve to the upper curve and what is the equation of lower curve the scale root of minus r minus x square up to r square minus x square and now if you substitute this so you're going to get 1 over pi r square the integral of dy is going to be y substitute the limit r square minus x square okay and the minus minus is going to be plus the square root of r square minus x square so this is going to be what the 2 times of scale root of r square minus x square over pi r square actually. So this is really the PDF of uh, the, the, the x coordinate of the function actually. Right? The 
x coordinate of the point where I'm going to hit actually the dot. Okay, and similarly you can also compute the values for x. Obviously, you need to have this conclusion that you know this is true. Okay, so you know x can be x can take a lot of values actually, but so it is it is zero on all other values, but it's valid only within what do you call this circle actually. So you can say that when x square is less than or equal to r, maybe the, when x is less than or equal to r. So when x is less than or equal to r, fx of x is this quantity, and when x is bigger than r, you know, r, you know, what do you call? Or maybe the better to say that the absolute of x is less than or equal to r, then fx of x is this quantity, and f, when the absolute of x is bigger than r the PDF is 0 and similarly you can also compute the CDF of Y actually. And now what I would like to compute is this third quantity that what is the probability that, that the distance between the point where I am hitting the dot and if, if is less than or equal to a fixed number A actually. So I am interested in computing the, what is the probability that B is less than or equal to A. So obviously the distance between the origin and this arbitrary point x is going to be the square root of x square plus y square less than or equal to a and I can compute this probability even more explicitly as x square plus y square or maybe uh, less than or equal to or equal to a square so I need to compute this okay so in order to compute this what you need to do, you need to integrate the your uh, joint PDF f of x y over this region x square plus y square less than or equal to e x dx and dy actually. By the way, what region I'm talking about? So this is my big circle with the radius r, and now x square plus y square less than or equal to a is this circle inside actually. So I'm saying that what is the probability that when the distance between origin and the point that hits the dot is less than or equal to A means that what is the probability that I'm going to hit within this uh, disk of the radius A actually. So whose radius is A. This is what that I mean. And how can I compute it actually? So how can I compute this integral? So again I can use what you call my polar coordinates x r cos theta y r sin theta. My theta goes between 0 to 2 pi. So it's entire circle, small circle. Okay. And r can be anything between 0 to a actually. Okay. 0 to a. So what would be the um, limits? So, so the limits are uh, uh, first of all, the PDF is uh, one over pi r square. Okay, so it's going to be one over pi r square uh, r dr d theta. I hope you understand that y dx dy when replaced with the polar coordinates, you write r dr d theta because r is really um, uh, the Jacobian actually, okay? It's it's uh, it's it's, it's uh, Jacobian when you try to do the change uh, uh, the change in variable actually the substitution that we are making, okay? R goes from where? R is uh, in this distance. R can be anything. It can be between zero to a. So let's put say zero to a, and the theta can be between zero to what do you call two pi? And when you're gonna compute this integral. You're gonna see that you're gonna get pi a square over pi r square as per our expectation actually. Okay. Expectation. Okay. Now Final thing, what would be the expectation of this distance actually? The expectation of this distance, by the way, 
I can treat this as the, um, the, the cumulative distributive function of A actually, uh, of, of the distance D. Okay? Distance between the point that where my dot is hitting and, um, and the origin actually. So if you want to compute what you call expectation, you need PDF because, because expectation of D is going to be the integral, say for example minus infinity to infinity of say d and under the x and f d of x with respect to d exactly. This is what that you need to compute. The question is how can I have this f d of x actually? So I will be a f d of a. The answer is simple actually. So Take your um, take your uh, take your CDF and differentiate it with respect to A. So you're gonna get what? So you're gonna get. By the way, this will become simplified to be A R square over R square. So if you differentiate this A square over R square with respect to A, so you're gonna get two A over R actually. PDF of it, if I write it more explicitly, FB of A is going to be 2A over R. Okay? But where? In this disk. PDF in this disk. And outside this, it's 0. Okay? So, so, so this A is going to be where A can be anything between where A can be any distance between 0 to R and it's 0 otherwise. Okay, so FB of A is 2A over R where A is any distance between 0 to R because there is no restriction on A. So in other words, I can choose this circle to be a smaller circle or as big as circle as the, you know, the total circle actually, the, the big circle. So the A can be anything. So this FB of A is 2A over R between 0 to R and it's equal to 0 otherwise. Okay? So otherwise it is 0. So keeping in view this, you can compute this integral as that, okay, between 0 to R, you take your A and you multiply it with say 2A by R and integrate with respect to dA. And when you're going to integrate, you're going to get what you call two third of the radius actually. So the expectation, in other words, what is the average that you're going to hit actually? Um, the dot, okay, is is going to be the two third of the region. So in other words, on average, you are going to hit within a radius of two-third, within a circle of the radius two-third actually, okay, within a circle of radius two-third, okay, so this is what is going to be the expectation of D actually. So I hope that, you know, browsing through these examples, you know, the, the basic purpose is that you need to uh, prepare yourself to use the you know 2D calculus or 3D calculus in order to compute these probabilities actually, and that's an important task. So let's move ahead. And discuss some more bits. So finally, I would like to talk about the CD, the joint CDF of. Um, the random variable actually. So the joint CDF of the random variable. And some of the basic properties of it actually. So as per expectation, what should be the definition? So if you have a joint PDF, then what should be the joint CDF actually? As per expectations, it should be f of a, b, and this is true for both actually. So whether you have a discrete 
uh, uh, random variable or a continuous time random variable. So these properties that I'm going to write are true for both cases. So f of a b would mean what? So, the, so let's imagine that this means that what is the probability that x is less than or equal to a and y is less than or equal to b actually. Okay. So we are a and b are any number between minus infinity to infinity. So this is the definition of the joint CDF of it. Question. Through this CDF, can I compute the marginal CDF? In other words, through this joint CDF, can I compute the, the 